key routes to get an interview. There are three basic key routes to get an interview. Number one is waiting. It's a step where you wait for your preferable job to be advertised. You check it on website and on different social media platforms and then you consider it and basically you apply for it. Number two is cold calling. A cold calling is an unsocialized call to an employer with the goal of showing your interest in their open position. Started with a cold call might even help you secure an interview or additional meetings because mostly firms use online recruitment method while considering CVs and the percentage they consider is 70% or above in your degree. If you have low percentage in your degree, so during a cold call, you will be able to showcase your personality as, your, as you explain more about the skills, you have, your qualification and things that you know about the preferable job. While having a cold call, there are a few things that you can use to increase your chance to have an interview. Number one is find the right contact to call. This means you must have proper or correct details to contacting for contacting the company where you are going to apply. Number two is call at the right time. For this, you must check the company opening and closing time. Number three is prepare notes. Make key notes so then afterwards, it would be easier for you to recall everything you want to say during the interview. Number four is use your contact names. Number five, call with confidence. You need to be more clear during a conversation through telephones. You have to make them realize that you are good in communication skills as mentioned in your CV. Number six is introduce yourself means Tell them who you are, why you have contacted us, and how you are familiar with this company. Number seven is share your qualification and your skills that you have. Number eight is schedule a time to discuss further. Let them know that you have the skills and you want to have an appointment with them for the interview. And number nine is the last follow-up with an interview, with an email after call, leave an email to the interviewer. Point number three, being headhunted means to market yourself in a way and to be in eyes of headhunters. Headhunters are those who try to find the candidate for higher position for which they would get higher rewards and that position can even be of an executive. Number fourth point, who dares wins. If you would wait sitting on the chair to get your ideal job, well, we're just hoping and nothing else. You have to pitch and market yourself. Assume you are a chocolate bar. You look good, taste good, and your ideally price is smartly packaged. There would be customers out there who would love to buy. The only problem is they don't know that you exist. Without active marketing, your talent and skills won't count. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Mutsa, and today I am going to tell you some tips about for how to get an interview. Number one, pitching profile, pitching yourself. Pitching yourself in interview is the name of the beginning of the interview in which interviewer asks some specific questions like tell me about yourself, who you are and why should we hire you. So to answer these questions, you have to be very confident calm and poor and the second thing is try to impress interviewer at the beginning and make him realize that you are important to them show interviewer your specific qualification experience and qualities that will make you different to others nowadays big companies receive thousands of applications on daily basis and now companies shifting towards boards or agencies. So try to register yourself with boards or agencies. But it's not hard and fast rule that you shouldn't try to apply directly in the company. Be confident and bold. Try write to the chief executive and explain 
who you are and why you are applying. Only your confidence and specific qualifications will make you different to others. Treat job seeking as an experience like having a car, having a career, campaign, network with family and friends. Life is just one big job interview and watch out about the impression you create in the least obvious places because some employees use Facebook to check out applicants background that what they are doing and putting on it. Self-obsession is a common theme among job seekers and a cross section of the average thoughts of your average applicant will probably be something along the lines of I want them to give me this job. I deserve some luck. I hope they pick me. I will feel better if I get this job. I need the money. I need the kudos. I will enjoy this career. I will look forward to the challenge. I want to feel confident. I want to be accepted. I want the interviewer to be nice to me and ignore that gap in my employment record where I could not be bothered to look for work. I want them to skip over the fact I have a bad record for punctuality. When you are pitching and making those all important first approaches to a company, it's not what you want that counts, it's what they want. It's not as hard as you would think to slip into the mind of the average interviewer. In many ways, their needs are quite simple. I want this person talents and skills to be a perfect fit with this job. I am recruiting for, I have to work through glutes for CVs. Most from applicants who lack the ability or qualification to do this job. I want to read through the CV that are clear and to the point. I want them to be good value, bringing return for the money we were offering to invest. I do not want to wait through a mass of irrelevant detail looking for the right fit. I am not an archaeologist going on a dig. I want the right person to leap out at me. I want them to know they were the right person and I need them to know why. So here is a rule to keep at the front of your mind throughout the pitching process. Put yourself in an interviewer's shoe. When you walk into an interview, you are obviously prepared with knowledge about yourself and your skill sets. Have you ever thought about walking into the interview trying to be prepared as the interviewer about their company, wants and needs? Putting yourself in the employer's shoe allows you to anticipate the question you will be asked and craft response that you resonate with your interviewer. Even classic interview questions such as What's your biggest weakness? How to do your CV? Cyberspace and home printers have opened the borders in recruitment terms. Although this is primarily a good thing, you have access to more vacancies and the ability to post yourself out there where the world where the whole world can see, plus the ability to jet as many copies of your CV across to as many companies as you choose. It has very obvious downsides. The high volume of CVs out there in cyberspace means there is a huge overload and interviewers complain that applicants no longer worry whether they are fit the job specification or not. While many applicants complain that interviewers are not providing enough job specification in the first place. The outcome of this is that most CVs are fuzzy, untailored, non-specific, non-specific and unsuitable for the position. This advice should help during the actual interview, but also at pitch stage. It will also help explain that what thing you should do and should not do. Things that you should do while making your CV. Make your CV as wide in scope as you like. Number two, spend time creating a world-class CV. Number three, update your CV. Number four, make it easy to read. Interviewers are busy people and they don't settle down with a hot cup of coffee to read your detailed CV. 
Break your CV down like headlines in the newspaper. Number five, thank the interviewer for reading it in your covering letter. Number six, list your best qualifications to grab their attention. Number seven, make sure to include your contact details, qualifications, experience, skills, and interests. Number eight, make sure your CV doesn't prove that you are a liar. You have to write down those skills in which you are master. Things that you should not do while making your CV. Number one, make it obvious the company is already on a long shot. Long shot would impress anyone. Make all your communication appear sound personal. Number two, create a resume that is one size fits all and make it unique for each company you send it to. Number three, don't apply anything out of the requirement as your personal touch such as smiley faces at the end of the CV or zany photos. These things will leave a bad impression on the reader. Number four, don't add funny things in your CV for humor. Number five, don't use exclamation marks in your CV. Number six is don't make things wordy. Make your phrases simple and short. Internet recruitment is all about online job advertising and online portals to apply for the job. For example, boards or agencies like Career Building and Monster ETC. So look for job boards that specialize in the sector that you want to work in. If you don't know where to start, type your key terms, searches, e.g. legal jobs in London into the Google and see which job boards appears on the first two pages. Upload your CV and create complete profile on the job boards because employers check boards to hire new candidates. Register for any job alerts or newsletters that job boards offers as they will use emails to send you jobs that match your search criteria. Always think literally when you decide which companies and sectors to approach. For instance, you could think that the NHS is all about medical staff, but it's not. Doctors and nurses make up less than 40% of the workforce. The NHS is made up of 440 organizations and their careers website can have details on jobs from hotel services and property etc strategy planning probably you have already gone through the process of interview but pitching is still to come if you don't get the job you pitch again if you want to be successful you need to be regularly report and update your pitching strategy just like you do with your interviewing methods it's time to roll up your sleeves Strategy planning for your pitch should include all these steps. Number one, mapping. Selecting the type of job market you are looking in. Number two, snooping. Picking out certain companies you're particularly keen on working for and finding out as much about them as you can. Number three, matching. Who or what type of person are they looking for? Reading and rereading any job specification is really important. Number four, mating call. Make your pitch by sending or posting your CV, phoning the company asking for an interview. A recruitment agency can promote you in the job market. There are certain advantages, including access to the jobs you might have never known existed and having someone to promote your talents and skills for you. So treat agency interviews in exactly same as you would treat a job interview. Smartness, punctuality, keenness and reliability will help push you to the top of the agency's books. Where in the past most job seekers would habitually go into a recruitment agency to register and meet a consultant to discuss their next career move. Contemporary life has now provided the convenience and ease of going online 
to register with recruitment consultancies at the any time of the day or night this advantage of the recruitment agency is that there are too many cvs on the database and your cv will be kept on their database without human interaction or a conversation with a professional consultant agencies type in keywords associated with the role to see which cvs emerge that match the search from their database use recruitment agency your cv will be kept on their database and then when a consultant acquires a new vacancy they will type in keywords and phrases associated with the role to see which cvs emerge that match the search from their extensive database the problem with this process is that it is entirely impersonal accurate matching is left to the software of the consultant's computer system any human institution and common sense is excluded by this clinical process and since an individual's personality and attitude have at least as much to do with obtaining a new job as experience or skills the question is how do you get your face known by the recruiter so they understand who you are as an individual rather than just a random set of competencies outlined on your cv the answer is that you have to be brave enough to get on the phone to them you need to be persistent ask if they receive your cv and very important obtain the name of the person you are dealing with at a to arrange an appointment to see them in person but if that approach fails just turn up at their offices and ask for the consultant that you spoke to and introduce yourself the opportunity to leave an impression on the consultant who is representing you should not be overlooked for underestimated it makes the world of difference now you are a real life person to the consultant not just another cv but it on their computer system always send a good quality covering letter with your cv it will provide you with a chance to stand out from the crowd many graduate cvs all look the same example they will read something like i am 22 years old and i have a degree in your covering letter will express as you as a person and help to personalize your application keep a note of the name of the person the cover letter goes to as if the receptionist receives your call for interview so he or she will grab it quickly the and there would be a good chance that you will be avoided being blocked remember to impress the agency when you go to meet them dress in a business suit with proper nails and polished shoes first impressions count it's true you could be asked why you have chosen this agency do your research so you can tell them exactly what why you selected them for example you can say i've come to you because you have been in business for 20 years and have an outstanding reputation and i have heard fantastic things about you it is vital to know exactly what you want in a career and exactly what you don't want to do keep an open mind about opportunities but do not talk about the role that it unsuitable according to your skill set and personality if that happens there are chances that you might lose that job recruitment firms frequently have a lot of work in contact center or sales position such as selling ad space this is acceptable if work is what you want to do and you have confident in your ability to achieve but if you are unsure about the position avoid being pressured into it ask your agency to provide you specific details about the employer you will be meeting they should be well aware of details about the person you are about to visit and the kind of question they are likely to ask you information that you would not easily learn from google or website search for example additionally they could share with the interviewer facts or important information about 
you such as the fact although you could be hesitant or apprehensive in the beginning of the conversation you are well qualified for the position